Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel on a bit of a windy and murky bank holiday weekend. John here, and I thought I'd bring you something today which we haven't done for a little while now. Last time we did one of these was in November last year. It's a fleet update. And a few of you have been asking for it. There's around about 20 cars in the Coupland collection at the moment. And in this video, we're going to go through each one of them, have a look at them, and uh, just talk about some of the work that's ongoing with Dad and I. I'll also be having a chat about some of the things that are going on here at Shea Coupland, including pond stuff, lighting, and all sorts of other bits and pieces. Stay with it then, because we're going to cover every single car, bar one, in this video and there's a very good reason why we're not covering one of them and that is because well it's not here it's with dad at the moment and that is the purple smart we'll talk about that when we get onto the front and have a look at the orange smart something i've not done then for you hopefully you enjoy it it's a fleet update so i've decided to start this fleet update with one of the most popular cars on the channel so far of 2024 which is the rover 75 we took the car to rustaville rustaville number one uh, back in march now and it was really popular it was so great to see so many of you people since then i've been driving the car I've put a good couple of hundred miles on the clock there's a few things i want to do um to it soon there are a couple of dents in the bonnet and if you can see those I need to get the paintless dent removal man here and just give it a good old tidy up i want to get every single dent knocked out of this car um, and then dad and i will we be replacing this sill this uh, near side sill needs replacing it's not too bad but it's something that does need doing in the future and you can see there's a couple of door knocks on the back there apart from that the rover 75 well it's going strong thankfully and will be remaining in the near future as part of the coupland collection um really enjoy driving this one actually if you haven't seen the work we did to it on the channel i suggest you check that out now Let's go to this old trusty favourite thing then, which is my Royal Snail. It's a uh, 2009 Fiat Doblo. And if you haven't seen the videos on the channel, why is it called the Royal Snail? Well, it's an ex-Royal Mail van. And when we took all the old Royal Mail decals off, it made a bit of a mess of the paintwork. So uh, what better to do than put some decals back on? Who are you barking at, missus? Who are you barking at? <laughs> I've got the fleet inspector with me on the front here. So the Royal Snail is a bit of a workhorse and it is slowly starting to deteriorate now. It's not rotten, but uh, in true, I don't know, Vauxhall Fiat Renaults of this era with red paintwork, it is suffering with a bit of lacquer peel on the bonnet and the roof. You can see there just how bad it's going. Um, I could spend, you know, more than what the van is worth having it re-sprayed, but the sad reality is it's uh, it's not worth it at the moment. It was 250 quid, this van. It cost me about 500 quid to get it on the road. But it is a great little workhorse, um, and I drive it, you know, pretty much every day if I need to do bits and pieces with it. So the van is going to be staying. Shame about that lack of peel. Um, it'll get to a point where I have to get it repaired. Um, or maybe wrap it, maybe wrap the roof and the bonnet, who knows. Any suggestions how to deal with that apart from paint it? I think the answer is just to paint it. Waiting patiently by uh, Mummy's car is the Fiat 500 Inspector. Um, this is Mrs. John Coupland's car. It's the Fiat 500. It's been with us nearly 10 years now and actually it's still going strong. It's just ticked over 68,000 miles, the car, and well, there's not really too much I can say about this other than it's Mrs. John Coupland's daily. A uh, few knocks and bangs, a few bits and pieces here and there. It is starting to just deteriorate on this front sill here. Um, something that can probably be sort of localised repair. But uh, it's where the paintwork has chipped off and it started to fade. You can see this bonnet here as well. Uh, and the bumper, the colour difference is really showing now. It does clean up nicely but um yeah needs a little bit of tlc but as uh, mrs john coopman's everyday car 
still going strong. Actually, it's a hoot to drive. There will be a video coming to the channel soon, by the way, uh, of me and Mrs. John Keaton taking this for a spin, something a little bit different, and I uh, hope you're looking forward to that one. Right, Crystal, let's take a look at uh, the Orange Smart, which, if you haven't seen the videos on the channel, is my latest addition to the collection. It's my Smart 451 Night Orange. Big shout out to everybody who has watched the videos on that. Ah, it's the Mop Cat. Hello, Mop Cat. She, she's not allowed out, so she's being a bit grumpy. Um, it's the 451. Actually, I've been dailying this car for the past couple of months now. I've still got to address the roof. Um, it's starting to blab and blister and it's just, I don't know what, how you would describe it. It's sort of deteriorated. I, I've got multiple people telling me the best way to deal with that is with wet and dry sandpaper. But actually, I haven't had the balls to do anything with it yet. So uh, that's on the list of things to do some stuff with. I'm really enjoying driving this. And uh, like I said in the intro, one of the cars is not here in the collection at the moment. And that is the Purple Smart. It's my Smart 450. It's at Dad's at the moment. It's in the workshop. Uh, and it's getting a bit of TLC. In fact, it's getting new rear suspension, new exhaust, and a new um, lower arm at the front. It's getting to a point where we've nearly replaced everything on that car now, but I still love it. And uh, there'll be a test drive video coming to the channel shortly, and there'll be a Smart 451 versus 450 video coming soon too. So I hope you'll enjoy that when it comes. Last but not least on the front is the Merlin Purple Audi TT Mark 1 Coupe. We've been doing a bit of work to this one as well. New rear suspension is coming very shortly. Uh, we did some brake work and it's been for an MOT and uh, yeah, a new steering rack gator, new um, battery. What's going to happen with this long term? Uh, it's going to be put up for sale shortly, I believe. It's not something that I'm driving. It's deteriorating being in the collection. Um, and it deserves, in my opinion, to go to somebody who's going to enjoy it, somebody who's going to love it, and somebody who's going to cherish it. So uh, this will be coming up for sale shortly. Uh, what's it worth? Who knows? Audi TTs at the moment, you can pick them up dirt cheap. Uh, Sean Hudson and Jim McGill have just picked up a Roadster for a thousand pounds. This is really rare in the Merlin purple, but uh, it's a 140,000 mile car. What am I going to list it for? I don't know, 2995 probably, and take 26. That's what it owes me uh, in the long term. So I obviously don't want to lose any money on it, but um, it deserves to be enjoyed, I think. So long term plans for the Audi TT is. Well, it's probably going to be leaving soon. Move around the back then, and let's talk about this, which is my Eiffel Williams single axle trailer. Still in use, still being used by mum and her art group for all her art storage needs. But uh, my plan for that is to get that sign written. Uh, I'm gonna, I want to get, you know, John Cooten cars on there, and then a few of the uh, pictures of the cars and the bits and pieces that we do, just to get a bit of promotion, really, for the channel on there. Worth mentioning as well at this time that I'm the custodian of Dad's trailer. This trailer is <laughs> is older than me and it's been rebuilt two or three times. Um, I'm looking after it at the moment purely because, well, I've got the space to keep it nice and safe. There's uh, Dad's single axle little, uh, little trailer. Right, let's take a look round the back then and we'll have a look at these six that are currently waiting for hard standing. But before we do that, let's just take a look at this because this uh, is the inspector's house. And uh, something exciting is happening this week. In fact, it's happening tomorrow, this bank holiday weekend, which has forced me to clear out the inspector's house. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but um, maybe the inspector will be getting a, uh, a friend to, uh, to inspect with her in the short term. So watch this space. Okay, let's discuss it then. The bone of contention that is uh, the car scrapyard at the back of the house. Mrs. John Cooten isn't a massive fan of this. And as you can see, everything is arranged sort of two by two. It's like Noah's Ark of cars. We've got two A4 B5s, we've got two K11 Micras, and we've got two 
Proton Saga Iswaras. Um, let's discuss the B5s first and foremost then. This is my Audi A4 B5 1.6. It's real poverty spec. Um, and what's the plan with it? Well, next week it's going for an MOT. I haven't driven it since October uh, last year. Let's have a look inside. There it is in there. Um, it's just covered 80 odd thousand miles and it's in relatively nice condition inside. It needs a bit of a clean, but um, it is a car that I really do enjoy driving still. Uh, that's going for an MOT. Um, it's one that I'm preserving in the collection. It won't be going anywhere soon. And then we've got this one, which is a silver B5. Uh, I rescued it from scrap. It's a 1.8. It has deteriorated quite badly here on the back bumper where it's had a respray at some point in its life. Uh, it's got a couple of flat tyres as well, which I'm going to pump up in just a minute. But let's have a look in here. It as well is not too bad inside. It's covered a lot more miles than the uh, 1.6. I think it's covered 120,000, but uh, it's still in relatively good condition. It would clean up quite nicely in there. It's not rotten or rusty. In fact, it's actually a better car underneath than the green one. Um, but it's one I'm not emotionally attached to and will be leaving the collection very shortly. It's going to get some TLC uh, and then go. I really do need to cut this as well, by the way, because this grass is no good for these cars. Um, we will be putting some hard standing in here. It's just a case of finding time, isn't it? Right, here we go. What we got? We've got one Nissan Micro. This is the y Reg. It's going for an MOT in a couple of weeks. I don't see there being any issues with that. It's just been stood, though, sadly. So, um, that will be leaving the collection once it's got an MOT. And if you fancy yourself a K11 Micro, it is very nice inside. Well, it smells beautiful, uh, but um, it's not going to be staying. 20,000 miles, this one. But it deserves to go to someone who's going to enjoy it and not someone who's going to use it to deliver kebabs. Same with this one. It's a CVT Auto. Um, it's been sat here maybe a couple of weeks now. Uh, 13,000 miles on the clock. Again, let's take a peek inside if you want. Oh no, I can't, it's, it's locked. Uh, maybe we can go around this side and have a peek inside. It should be unlocked. Um, I've just locked that side maybe. There we go, let's have a peek inside. CVT Auto, like I say, um, one that deserves to be enjoyed and loved and it just isn't in my collection. So I will be moving that on very shortly, getting MOT on that. It's never failed an MOT, it's never had an advisory in its life, so fingers crossed all will be good, and then that will be moved on. So if you fancy a uh, lovely low mileage Nissan Micra, let me know, because there's two coming up for grabs very shortly. This Proton, the 1.5 GL, is one I rescued as part of the six uh, collection last April. Um, it's sat here deteriorating because, well, it's being scrapped. That's the point of this one. Uh, it's going to be used for parts. It's not rotten in the sills here, but actually when you look underneath it, it is posh rotten. Um, it can't be saved. It can't be going back on the road, sadly. So it's one that I'll be breaking for spares and then the banger boys will get their hands on it and they'll put it around the track. That's that one. It's actually been decatted as well because uh, I needed to take the exhaust off this one to put on this one, which is my white SE, which is in the collection. Um, it needs a good old scrub, as you can see. It's been stood here uh, a couple of months now. It should fire up. Should we see if it'll fire up? <laughs> it's been stood a, a week or two without being fired up. Let's see if we can fire this one up. Oh, it's in. Ah, good job we checked. I've put it in reverse. Never keep the handbrake on. See if it'll fire up. There we go. So that starts up nicely. Uh, this one will be coming back on the road in the next couple of weeks. It's due in MOT. It'll be cleaned, it'll be tidied up. It needs a good old scrub. But um, yeah, this one will be coming back on the road this, uh, this coming week. That's it for outside. I know it looks worse than it probably is. And I know some of you will be shouting at your screens thinking why aren't you driving these cars well i do i do drive them uh it's just a case of i don't drive them in the winter so uh, with all the bad weather we've been having it is time to get them recommissioned and that will keep dad nice and busy i've also been working on this this morning uh, mrs john Cooper and i were sat having a cup of tea and we spotted a great big dirty seagull in the garden and it was flying towards us and we said oh look at the size of that seagull and then we realized well the seagull had actually got one of our fish from uh, our fish pond so i'm devastated by that so i've quickly popped a proton saga <laughs> bonnet over the top of there to hopefully deter that seagull uh the hot tub is going 
if anyone needs a hot tub, by the way, it's astronomical to run. So that is going, and we're gonna be replacing it with some more gym equipment, which I've been using uh, to lose a little bit of weight recently, if you've been following my weight loss journey. Um, three stone down now, so that's good going. Right, let's take a look then, lastly, uh, but not leastly, in the big garage, which does need a paint. That's one of my jobs for this week. Ta-da! I'm in the big garage, and uh, as you can see, here's the oldest car in my collection. It's my 1949 Armstrong Sidley Lancaster. It's going to be coming out of hibernation very shortly to be put back on the road. Um, it's in this brown and cream colour, if you haven't seen it. Uh, let's take a look in there, quick. Da -da -da -da. There it is. Uh, it's my Lancaster. 1949 as I say and if you haven't seen the videos on the channel there are going to be some coming very shortly about this because we'll be recommissioning it for the summer season. Uh, one that's not going anywhere is the Proton Black Knight. It needs a bit of a, um, a clean off because it's got a bit dusty in the past couple of weeks but this is the Black Knight. It's still here. It's still in the collection. It's one that as I say will not be leaving at any point. Um, there it is, if you haven't seen the Black Knight. If you don't know about the Black Knight, we won the Festival of the Unexceptional 2021 with this car. Totally original, last one of its kind in the world, so it's quite a special car. In fact, there's two special cars in here. Proton Saga Black Knight 1.5 GL, last one left in the world. Proton 1.5 SE LE. Also the last one left in the world. Um, that one's not been on the road for a couple of years now. This is Jeff. Why hasn't it been on the road? Well, because the Black Knight has been taking all the credit. Um, my aim at some point this year is to get everything in here up and running and on the road and enjoyed. Um, there's Jeff, 1.5 SE LE. It needs a clean, but it does come up lovely. There are a little bit of a colour difference as well, or is a little bit of a colour difference between the two, both in Mallorca black, but this one has uh, been uh, in the garage a lot longer and actually the gray comes up a lot nicer. Lastly in here, it's uh, Mrs. John Koopman's toy. It's her 2004 Audi TT Roadster. It needs some TLC. Um, I've had it out and about recently. And to be honest with you, being stood hasn't done it any good. Um, you can see how flat this bonnet looks as well. There you go. It needs a good old clean and tidy up and a recommission. It's on the list, I promise. Long term, what's the plan with it? Um, I don't know. When I bought it, I promised the owner, who is a very good friend of mine, that it would stay in the collection and not go anywhere. Uh, it's probably going to go uh, either this summer or next summer. So if you fancy yourself a TT Roadster, Watch this space. Lastly, then, we come to the other garage, which houses uh, the Micra at the back. We'll have a look at that in a second. And my 1985 Toyota MR2. We've had this out recently. Uh, it's been off the road, or had been off the road since 2021. It's been to Dad. It's had um, a new MOT. It passed its MOT last week. Uh, that video is coming to the channel the MOT video, because it's the 40 years of the Toyota MR2 this year. And so my intention is to take the Toyota to Hatton Country World on the 2nd of June to the National MOT, uh, MR2 Day, not MOT Day, National MR2 Day. Lots of proton junk here. I'm cleaning up and some uh, old signs which are going. Um, this is it then. This is the last one, last one we need to talk about, which is, my 2000 and, well, 2000 actually, uh, to uh, Toyota, my 2000 plate Nissan Micra. There it is. It's under there. It's a Nissan Micra Sport. It's quite a rare model. Um, it was my first car, this one, and uh, it's been sleeping since 2015. It is starting to deteriorate in places. I think that front wing is, uh, is quite bad and the other side as well is quite bad. Rustaval 2 is coming and I would like to recommission this car and get it back on the road and enjoy. Um, it's something that Dad and I are going to have to spend a little bit of time working on. 
will I be able to get it out, get it up and running, get it recommissioned and to Rustaville too? That's a good question. <laughs> we shall soon find out. Um, I floated the idea past Dad of taking this car to Rustaville. He's all on board, but he has said as long as the people of YouTube want to see it. So if you guys want to see us recommission the Micra, get it back on the road, and if you think you'd like to see it at the Rustaville, let me know in the comments below, and we will aim to throw some money at it. Um, I think it'll be a good project. Dad, more dubious than me, but... Uh, but yeah, I'd like to see this car back on the road. It's been sleeping, as I say, nearly 10 years and it deserves, in my opinion, to be, uh, to be back on the road. Right, let's just tuck that back in there. Well, there you have it then, a walk around the Coupland collection for June 2024. What's gonna be happening? Well, as we discussed, the silver Audi will be going for an MOT and it will be leaving the collection along with probably a couple of the Micras as well. That Rustaval project of the Micra, will we get it done? Who knows? And I'm sure between now and the next time I do a fleet update, there'll be more things added to the collection because I just can't stay off Car and Classic and Facebook Marketplace. If you've enjoyed this video and you enjoyed looking around the collection, thumbs up please if you could, if you haven't already done so. Um, comment down below, what is your favourite car in the collection and what would you like to see more of? Over 5,000 subscribers now, so if you have subscribed to the channel, thank you, genuinely humbled. And if you aren't subscribed already, please consider doing so. From me and the inspector today then, thanks for watching, goodbye. If you've enjoyed this video, I've selected a few more specially for you on this page. Click either side to select them now. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button to always stay up to date with the channel.